What's going on YouTube? Champer Productions coming back at you with another Transformers video review. And in today's video, I'll be taking a look at the new Transformers Kingdom Voyager class Dinobot. Now, starting off by taking a look at the packaging for this figure, as we can see here, we've got some amazing box art of Dinobot in his Velociraptor mode and in his robot mode. In that box art looks fantastic. We got Voyager class written here on the side, Kingdom War for Cybertron Trilogy, Transformers, Takara Tomy. We got Dinobot written up there. We got a Predacon symbol here on the top of the box, which is which I really like because it's a callback to when Dinobot used to be uh, Predacon before he uh, switched sides to to the maximals on the bottom is just um, continuation warnings and contents of the box and whatnot. On the side of the box here, we can see that amazing Kingdom box art with Dinobot right there. And on the back of the box here, we've got a picture of Dinobot in his robot mode, his Velociraptor mode. And we've even got some cave drawings of a Velociraptor and then he transforms in 28 steps. We got a Predacon symbol right there. So overall, the packaging for this figure is really, really nice. Now running over Dinobot's accessories, he does come with his tail accessory that we see him use in the Beast Wars cartoon, and it does have a transforming ability, so to do that we're going to split it into two sections like so, and then it does open up to become his sword and spinning shield. And as we can see here, both of these have been casted really nicely and molded really nicely. There are no paint applications on the tail, but there's some really nice molded and details there on the inside, as you can see in there. Set that off to the side, and then he does come with his sword, which has been done in a nice purple paint, which looks really good in my opinion. Um, some people have complained about this not being a silver, which I really don't mind. I really like this, kind of having this purple uh, paint to it, because in some uh, shots in the show, um, it does, the sword did appear purple, so I'm completely fine with this color scheme. I think it looks really cool, and then we got the nice gold, um, orangish, goldish handle there at the bottom, which has been molded really nicely, so really nice to accessories. Um, my only complaint is that the sword sticks out the tail of the Velociraptor tail, um, that looks really stupid, but... Moving right along, he does come with a collector's card, which this time I got Megatron. It's Decepticon. I have not actually looked at the foil of this card, but there we go. Very nice picture of uh, Megatron. So taking a look at what's on the inside, we can see Megatron in what appears to be his gladiatorial arena, which looks quite awesome. Megatron and some Cybertronian Hieroglyphs, which is really quite awesome. So definitely a cool collector's card here. Um, try to get all the bubbles and whatnot out of it. That's the only real complaint I have about this is that the sticker kind of does leave bubbles on the collector card. He does come with his warning sheet. And then he does come with his instruction booklet, as seen here, Dinobot got the Predacon symbol, and it has been done in very nice, clear um, with some very nice clear pictures on what to do and how to transform the figure. I really like the instructions for these new Kingdom figures. And moving right along, here we have Kingdom Dinobot in his Velociraptor mode. And I've got to admit, this is an abomination. I'm going to be honest, this Velociraptor mode is quite terrifying in a, a few different ways. It's not terrible. But it's terrifying. Um, yeah, just giving you a 360 overview of the figure in Velociraptor mode. I'll let you pick out the most scary aspect of the Velociraptor mode to you. The hands. I want to talk about the hands for a quick second. Why are they so deformed? Wh what happened here? Um, this is kind of a necessary evil for the robot mode. But this, these hands are terrifying. Why? 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 Surely there's another way, and I'll explain why they're like this when we go into robot mode, but surely there's another way, because this is just... This is just excessive. They point down, they have articulation, and I'll get into articulation here in a little bit, but... They just... that It's so weird looking. The face sculpt has been done fairly nicely, uh, with some nice 
black painted pupils and some nice white painted teeth, but like Studio Series 86 Grimlock, he's missing his front teeth. So whenever he's looking <laughs> at you, he's just got no front teeth. It's just terrifying. And then we do have some excess robot kibble right here on the back of the thigh. And I mean, you know, credit where credit is due. They're trying to, uh, you know, get to accurate looks for the robot mode and velociraptor mode, but the velociraptor mode really kind of ate it in this case scenario because they definitely sacrificed for the robot mode, which I'm glad they did. I would have rather them said, you know what, forget the velociraptor mode, which is definitely what happened here, and let's focus on the robot mode, and they definitely pulled through with this. And, you know, all negatives aside with the velociraptor mode, um, you know, uh, articulation, he does have a opening jaw here and um, has some nice paint on the inside of the mouth here for the tongue, which does look quite nice. And again, the teeth. <laughs> uh, I don't know why they didn't include the front teeth. It really doesn't make any sense. Uh, arms can pose around. There is a hinge here and they can spin all the way around. They do have an elbow bend, so to speak, and the ginormous hands on ball joints, and you can fold them up if you want to, but, you know, um, moving back to the legs here, I do have a problem with this panel here, it doesn't want to stay tabbed in on this side, and no matter how much I fiddle with it, it doesn't really stay tabbed in, oh well, um, but his legs can move outward due to the transformation, and you do have a knee bend to a certain degree, and, eh, you can't really rotate the thigh or anything without untransforming the leg assembly here. And you do have ankle swivel and a tilt and whatnot, and the toes are articulated if you wanted to do something with that. Uh, no tail articulation or anything. So the articulation in Velociraptor mode is kind of limited. It does have some nice paint applications here on the side, which does look quite nice, and the tail just it wouldn't have really been that much of a challenge for them to make the tail a little bit longer to overcome this or taken this part off and add a point to the tail. That way the sword isn't jutting out the back of the tail and that just looks weird in of itself. But I mean, you know, Velociraptor mode isn't really the best, but this has definitely been my most anticipated figure out of the whole kingdom lineup. Um, You know, Velociraptor mode... It resembles a Velociraptor, we'll leave it at that. For size comparisons, here we have a Deluxe Class Kingdom Cheetor, so you can see how these two scale together, and we can see here that Dinobot is quite um, longer than Cheetor in Velociraptor mode, and quite a bit bigger as well. Um, so, we can see the scaling there. Let's bring in Kingdom Voyager Class Optimus Primal. We can see how these two, these two scale. Uh, Optimus Primal is a little bit, um, is a little bit, depending on how you have Dinobot pose, a little bit taller when standing up. Uh, but Dinobot, if you lift him back some, he can be a little bit taller than Primal. But as we can see, these two look decent side by side. And let's bring in Kingdom Leader Class Megatron. Let's bring him in. His former leader, Dinobot's former commander, and as we can see here, Megatron is quite a bit bigger. But just talking about the individual modes for these two figures, what happened with Dinobot? Megatron looks outstanding in T-Rex and in robot mode. I mean, the proportions are all correct. He has a nice full set of teeth in his mouth, and then there's just Dinobot, who has these weird hands, no front teeth, and it's just like, what happened? I, I really don't know, but talking about the scale of these two, I think these two definitely look cool side by side, have them roaring at each other like that. But, um, there you have your size comparison on that. So, you can see how these two figures scale with one another. There you go. So, Velociraptor mode is not the best in the world, but he definitely does sacrifice a lot in this mode for the robot mode, and by way of segue, Dinobot Maximize! 
Now to start off with for Dinobot's transformation, we are going to start here with the tail. We're just going to remove it and set it off to the side and then take the uh, Velociraptor legs and fold them out. That will give us clearance to take the feet and legs and pull them down like so. Just do that on both sides and hinge them down and then straighten out the legs and then fold these panels here up and tap them into place. And they do also have some very nice molded in detail as seen here. Do that on both sides. And fold out the heels, fold up the foot and fold out the heels like so. Now that we have this whole, the legs finished, we can take this whole assembly here and fold it up, then rotate around this section here. Take the Velociraptor head and fold it down like so. And then take this assembly here, untab it and pull it back and push his robot mode head down. And there is a tab right here that will connect into this tab hole right here. So we're going to bring this section here that has a hinge at that spot and then we can tab all of this into place like so and then bring this whole assembly down like that and then there are two pegs here and here that will tab into two tab holes here and here so we're just going to bring all this in and tab it into place like so then take the panels here and fold these down and then swing them around and these will create a faux chest piece to fold around the rest of the velociraptor head so we're just going to bring it around like so and then we take the velociraptor hands there is a tab hole right here and a tab here to tab into this section here and there is another tab hole on the hand itself and a tab right here and these will form um gap fillers for the robot mode and that's why they are so long in velociraptor mode to fill out this void here which as i mentioned earlier it's kind of a necessary evil for the robot mode but you can see it clearly right here so i mean it works as a gap filler but then it also adds a little bit of unnecessary you know kibble to the robot mode but i mean you barely notice it's not that out of place take this some take his arm and fold it around then take the hands straighten them out like so we're going to do the same process on this side fold that up rotate around his arm and here we have dinobot in his fantastic looking robot mode and here we have kingdom dinobot in his robot mode and i've got to say since this figure's announcement i have been so excited for this figure to debut and here he is this is a fantastic looking rendition of Dinobot himself. This is again been my most anticipated figure for this whole entire Kingdom lineup. Ever since this figure was announced, I was so excited and having him here in a Voyager class format does not disappoint in the slightest. I'm giving you a quick spin around of the figure here, we can see that the robot mode has been done just pitch perfectly he looks like he has stepped right off the screen and into a figure format and i've got to say the velociraptor mode while yes it is quite um unappealing in certain areas it definitely does make up for tenfold with this amazing looking robot mode i i'm i'm super excited with this figure i'm super happy with it so let's go ahead and take a look at the details starting off at the feet the feet have been nicely molded and detailed as we can see here and then we've got some nice detail here on the legs as well. No paint applications, unfortunately, but moving our way up, we can see the paint that we get here on the knees, and that has been really nice and well done. As we can see there, we got some paint on the knees and thighs, some nice gold paint. The hands have been very nicely molded and detailed. They are obviously the Velociraptor feet. In robot mode, we got some nice gold paint there on the back of the thighs as well. And moving our way up, we can see on the lower torso, we've got some gold paint there. And then moving our way up to the upper body, we can see this magnificent looking sculpt here for the upper torso. 
and you've got the faux chest here on the sides, but it definitely does create a nice look that the Velociraptor head does indeed cover the entire torso section here with some nice blue paint here on the side, some nice white for the eyes, and some gold here on the sides as well. Very nicely done. And that head sculpt, that is Dinobot to the max. This could not be any more accurate to Dinobot's head sculpt. The nice blue face, the red eyes, the black trim going around the top of, or the lower part of his helmet here above his head just looks fantastic. And then we got some more black paint here on the side and that paint does continue along the back. So the head sculpt, in my opinion, is pitch perfect. 10 out of 10 on the head sculpt. I mean, it could not be any more accurate. Uh, one thing I do kind of see a lot of reviewers complaining about is his proportions where the arms are concerned, and I can definitely see that. The shoulders could definitely be a little bit more broad, and the hands could be a little bit smaller. But, I mean, once you have this figure in person, it's really not all that bad. And it just looks really good in robot mode. Now, he does have his two accessories, and there are two peg holes on the inside of his hands, which for the sword has a little peg on the inside of the hilt right here so just plugging that in you can get him holding that like so and then on the inside of this hand here there's also another peg and a or a peg hole and then there is a peg on the shield so you can get him holding these two weapons with no problem whatsoever you can see i'm shaking the figure and they are not falling out whatsoever so that is really nice to see that they make sure that this figure can hold it without problem now one issue i do kind of have with the robot mode and this is something apparently that's quite common is this the torso has a little bit of wiggle in it and the waist articulation the torso articulation is tight but the pin connecting the upper body and the lower torso is has wiggle room in it, which is quite weird, but it's honestly not that bad. Um, and especially if you're going to display them on the shelf and not really mess around with them all that much, you're definitely not going to notice that. But this is too much of a fun of a figure to not want to play with and mess around with. So let's talk about his posability. So starting off at the head for posability, he can look up, he can look down, he does have a full 360 degrees range of motion, he can even kind of look cockeyed at you if you want him to, which is definitely uh, something I could see this character doing. Arms are quite articulated as well. You got a hinge here for the transformation, then a separate hinge for the robot mode. You get a full 360 swivel. You get a full 360 degree bicep swivel, elbow bend both ways. You do have a wrist swivel, a hinge here at the wrist as well, and finger articulation as well, which is quite nice. Lower torso has waist articulation, full 360 degrees if you can make sure to get the proper clearance because sometimes these velociraptor claws do get caught up on the um, sides of the hips so just be careful for that legs are quite posable as well he can kick forward he can sort of kick backwards but it's kind of hindered by this the molding here for the velociraptor mode and he can kick outward he does have a thigh swivel but on my figure it is incredibly tight incredibly tight so there is a thigh swivel there he does have a very tight knee bend again very tight on my copy not sure why and then he does have backwards ankle movement and not really forward and a good ankle tilt so this figure is definitely posable enough to pull off some really really cool poses when in robot mode now I can understand where some people would want this shield to be able to spin freely in Dinobot's hand like it did in the show. Unfortunately, as I just showcased, it doesn't. It only connects to his hand by a 5mm peg and it can't spin around in his hand. But there is a way that you can accomplish this feature. So in order to do that, we are going to need a certain Siege of Voyager class Springer and we are going to look at them in helicopter mode because we need this piece right here this is the propeller section for siege springer and we can go ahead and remove these swords and then we are left with this main piece right here now ironically enough there is a five millimeter peg hole on this and i'm sorry my camera doesn't want to focus on that there's a five millimeter peg hole and a five millimeter peg on the tail you can combine these two and if i just grab dinobot here and open up his hand like so and then 
we can tab this whole section in like so. And you can have him with a spinning shield if you do want to have that for your figure. So if you have Siege Springer, it is possible to get the spinning tail gimmick or the spinning shield gimmick like we saw in Beast Wars. So if you're into that, go ahead, be my guest. It's an awesome little thing you can do. Um, me personally, I won't be displaying him like this. Uh, but it is an option. It is kind of fun to just sit here and spin it around. Um, but I'm not going to be displaying him with this because it does cause the shield to come off of his hand quite a significant bit. But you can definitely pull off the spinning shield like we saw in the Beast Wars cartoon. So just removing that, closing up the hands. There we have that. Now for size comparisons, let's bring in Kingdom Deluxe Class Cheetor, so we can see how these two scale side by side, and we can see Dinobot is definitely considerably taller than Cheetor. Set him off to the side. Let's bring in Kingdom Voyager Class Optimus Primal, so we can see how these two scale side by side, and we can definitely see that Optimus Primal is a shorter, um, shorter Voyager for sure, because we can see that Dinobot is considerably a good bit taller than primal you can see there but there's your size comparison there and let's bring in kingdom leader class megatron and we can see how these two scale side by side bring my camera up a little bit so you guys can see we can see that megatron is about a head taller than dinobot a little bit over a head taller than Dinobot, as we can see here. But these two definitely look really good side by side, as we can see here. But for size comparisons, that's about it. He poses really, or he looks really good with both um, Megatron and Primal, but this robot mode for Dinobot is absolutely fantastic. So overall, do I recommend Kingdom Dinobot? Absolutely, this is a fantastic figure. While, yes, the Velociraptor mode definitely does fall short in a few different areas, it definitely, like I said earlier, makes up for it tenfold when in robot mode. The robot mode itself is painted beautifully, it has a lot of nice paint applications, the posability is incredible, you can pull off some amazing poses with this guy, and is definitely going to be a amazing figure for anyone's collections, especially anyone who is a fan of the character like I am. Dinobot, for me, is definitely, out of all the Transformers Beast Wars characters, my personal favorite. So whenever this figure was announced for this toy line, I was so excited, and having him in hand, he does not disappoint in the slightest. So if you see him in store and think that you might like him, I would highly recommend picking him up. You will not be disappointed. Again, my only complaint with the figure is definitely with some of the issues in Velociraptor mode, and I can definitely see where other reviewers can complain about the proportions of the figure at some uh, criteria with the shoulders and whatnot, but aside from that, I really have no issues with the figure. Me, personally, I don't have any issues with the figure. The figure has a unique and enjoyable transformation. It is a little bit fiddly in some parts, but I can definitely see past that because this is just a fun figure to pick up and pose around, and he definitely does get the job done. If there's one accessory I wish he did include, it would be the golden disc, but it is confirmed that with the new Transformers Kingdom Titan Class Arc figure, we will be getting a couple golden discs, so so this will definitely be a great figure to have holding the golden disc itself because it played such a major role to Dinobot's character. But guys, that's all for me. If you enjoyed this video review, be sure to leave a like, comment what you think of Transformers Kingdom Dinobot down in the comment section below, and be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss a video from my channel. That's all for me, Champer Productions, signing off.